Hello and welcome to another episode of Wildness and Wellbeing. I'm Tim Jones, also known as Adventure Yeti, and today I'm here with Nick Pratt, also known as Nomad Nick, who spends his life adventuring in his van with his dog Toby. Hey Nick, how's it going? Hello mate, not so bad, thanks. Thanks for having me. So I noticed you, you love the outdoors, especially dips. When When did that passion initially begin? Uh, it started at a young age, to be honest. Uh, my dad was always into the outdoors. He took me and my older brother out. Um, and we got into hiking, uh, camping, fishing, hunting, uh, everything outdoorsy, really. Um, yeah, just at a young age. And as I've got older, obviously, I've come back into it. Are there kind of like any any points where you feel the outdoors has helped you with your mental health? Yeah, it was last year and a half ago. I had a big, big bad breakup with a partner from nine years. Uh, we had two kids, um, house, car, stable job. And that all went south all of a sudden, really, in a bad way, financially. Um um yeah i've just struggled with that a lot last year being in the outdoors it's like you just have to keep going no matter what like living in a van or being outside all the time you have to just keep going especially with the dog as well like keeping me dog that keeps me busy as well he's he's saved me a few times to be honest um but yeah, just keeping busy all the time and going for walks. You've got to go up this mountain or oh, I don't feel like doing it. But you've just got to keep going. No matter what gear you're in, um, you can always drop down a gear, I always think. And even like when you're in first gear, you can always get out of the car and keep walking. You can always keep going. So yeah, it's helped me in that perspective, really. Trying to just keep going through life and don't give up and reach the top of the summit or the trig point or anything like that the hill <laughs> something like that yeah that must have been really really super hard yeah um, what what kind of elements of the outdoors do you think help you the most um i got into i was always into hiking uh that that's a good one to start off with um but then i, I found someone doing fell running i seen someone doing fell running uh, trail running and I thought at 34 oh can I do that my age still like I've put my body through a bit of stress in my younger teens and early 20s um, could I still do that and once I got into it I like realised I wasn't that fit and oh, I'll try and get a bit better this time and doing them runs that's like another mind game you've got to just keep going you feel sick, you feel thirsty you want to stop but then you think in your head, no, I'll just keep going and running. Just keep going and running and it'll be worth it at the end. But then you've also got to get over the fact once you're at the top, you've got to go back down. So it's, it is a mind game, like uh, fell running. I do enjoy that. That's probably helped me most. And um, always after a, a run, you've got to go for a cold dip. So totally. jumping in the streams is always a favourite to get over that. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's just that feeling of invincibility once you've done a, a cold water dip it's just so amazing yeah and yeah it's the perfect end to any hike i yeah, typically i'll tend to do the same to be fair yeah i've just sold my kayak i've ventured more into the canadian canoe oh wow yeah um i do a bit in the lakes go up to scotland quite a bit i think there's something really therapeutic about paddling along and I, I've been really into it recently. I've just got a paddle board and yeah. I've just loved the kind of freedom and just chilling on the water and having a, I bring my flask with me as well yeah. and just have a, a cuppa. Yeah, it's nice to just stop off, isn't it? And have a minute. Like you said, it is very therapeutic. You get into a rhythm. I think that's why I sold my kayak because that was more, let's have it, let's go, see how fast we can go. Let's find some rapids. But something about a Canadian canoe or uh, stand-up boards where you, it is like a nice rhythm and you've got to, you can't like stop uh, thinking what you're doing. It's like a meditation. So does Toby? Uh... Yeah, Toby comes with. Um, he does jump in at the start every time. I tell him not to, but he does. 
so he's usually shaking at the front of the boat, dithering with my coat wrapped round him. Oh, yeah, but he does love it. What? What is he? Sorry, he's a working cocker spaniel. Oh. He's six years old now, so he's just about calming down. When I have been outdoors, like I spend a lot of time on my own. I, I do like me, um, my own time and my own company. Um, obviously, I do talk to the dog non-stop, but that's just one of them. Yeah, <laughs> might look crazy, but he's me like best friend really. Um, but yeah, being outdoors, you bump into a lot of people, and I feel. A lot of outdoorsy people, especially doing sports like running or cold dips, it, I find it hard to think. They must be going through something themselves to be like climbing these hills and I wonder what they're thinking. So it's good that people are more open when you are outdoors. You do say hello to people. More People come across more friendly. Um, you get talking to characters. You meet some crazy characters, but... That's all just part of the story. Yeah, all part of the journey, totally. Um, what what tools helped you the most with your men- when it comes to your mental health? Um, just probably self reflection. I always think in in my it doesn't work with everyone, but in my head, it's self reflection and not being so hard on yourself. And what what inspired the van life? The van life, at a young age, I enjoyed camping and I always had the dream of running away and jumping in the van, um, going living in the wild. Um, after watching that film, Into the Wild, one of my favourites. Um, and yeah, just started off following van life a bit and went from there, just jumped in a van and went for it one day. Nice. Mm. So where did you start when it, it went to get in the van? Was it just a bare bones van that you picked up uh well i was in a cottage in tideswell over winter while the weather was bad i'm um, glad i did with all the snow we had and me rent was coming up uh it was coming to its end my tenancy so i was umming and ahhing with the amount of bills i was paying should i go into another rented accommodation spend all this money but still live in my bedroom and cook in my bedroom and have my dog in my bedroom. I felt, when I got back into the van, when I come out of the van and went into the cottage, I felt like it was wasted time. Like I'd go downstairs to cook my meals and I'd go back upstairs to go to bed. I'd go downstairs to... It felt like I was wasting time walking to the bathroom. (laughs) When you're in the van, it's all just there. and So I thought, I'm just going to get another van. I'm going to get a bigger one. Um... I was just seeing that one, an old LDV convoy minibus, and I fell in love with it. Uh, the red was, are you okay? So I was going through <laughs> That's me... That's awesome. Yeah, I was going through my troubles, and I was like crying when I seen it, when I noticed that. Um, and yeah, I phoned the fellow and I said, is it still available? He said, yeah, come down and get it. He was in London, so my dad drove me down, picked it up, uh, and yeah, just got it from there. It only had something like um, 20... 25,000 miles. Oh, wow. Yeah, for a 98. So it was in good nick. Mm. So what's been the biggest challenge when it comes to converting the van? Um, the biggest challenge was the mechanics, because uh, I'm no good at mechanics myself. I can change a filter or change oil, spark plugs, but from that point on, I'm, I can't do anything else. So the biggest challenge for me was when I got the van, I had six days to convert as much as I could because they had a job in Scotland on a campsite. So I took 14 seats out, insulated the floor, put the floor down, insulated the walls, put boards up. Halfway through the roof, I gave up, because if you've ever done overlapping chick board, it's really hard to do on your own, holding one end and trying not to break the other end. But yeah, I just jumped into it from then, but I've not done much more since then. So the hardest part is probably living with it half done and seeing all the jobs and wanting to do them but not having having the time. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what's next on your bucket list? Ooh, next on the bucket list? Um, just keep going. Just keep going in the van. Uh, it's coming winter soon, so I've just ordered a log burner at slash nice. range oven. So I'm looking forward to installing that. I'm not looking forward to cutting a hole in my roof, but I've got full confidence in my DIY skills. 
But yeah, I, I might stay around Congleton for work for another year, save up, maybe two years, and then I might venture out. You never know. Yeah. Just keep the van going, keep myself going. Yes, yeah, so thanks for coming on, Nick. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. How 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 do people follow your adventures? Um, I'm mostly on Instagram. It's Nick underscore Pratt underscore eighty nine. Hey everyone, thanks for listening. If you can like and subscribe, that would be amazing. If you could also leave a review, that would be fantastic too. Catch you all soon.